All right. Um, so where were we? We were when I left you in the last lecture. We had looked at uh, what happens when we have molecules that are beta dicarbonyl compounds of each other, and I said to you that you need to go and uh, read up about these compounds. Uh, we know that the protons over there are a lot more acidic. It just makes it a lot easier to deprotonate there and to then use them uh, in, in uh, reactions. The most important thing, though, was that when we had an ester on one of those sides, we had these two uh, uh, named compounds. The one was uh, dimethyl or dimethyl melanate, which would look like this. Uh, and... Then the other one was uh, aceto acetic acid, uh, which looked like this. And um, I'm stressing again that this is important for you to uh, go and read up about this in your textbook. Know uh, how these things can uh, um, uh, break down afterwards. There's a decarboxylation step, and they're really important in terms of putting functional groups onto uh, molecules using this sort of chemistry. Um, it, what I want to just talk about uh, today is just a very simple uh, principle, but it's actually quite a powerful one. Uh, and it's something perhaps we haven't actually thought too hard about, but it goes back to the ketones. So we've looked at all these different functional groups. We've looked at esters, we've looked at uh, acids, we've looked at the aldehyde and the big problem with the aldehyde. Uh, we've looked at one, three dicarbonyl compounds, but um, although we've looked kind of at, at, at ketones, we there's one small and important part which we haven't really thought about. And well, it has to do with this. So if I had to take this molecule here, and that is uh, cyclo, cyclohexanone, um, if we had to treat this with a base to deprotonate, this ketone is actually symmetrical. So it makes no difference whether we deprotonate here or we deprotonate there. The enolate that we're going to form uh, with whatever base we use is going to be exactly the same. There's, there's no difference between these two, uh, whether we deprotonate there or we deprotonate there the molecule is symmetrical, so it's the same. Uh, the question is, is what about if we don't have a symmetrical ketone? We take exactly the same thing, <clears throat> and we put a methyl group over there. Now the point is, when we deprotonate, we actually have two possible enolates that uh, can form. Uh, and the one, um, just draw that out, will look like this, O minus, okay, that we are using a base here, uh, and the other one that will form is uh, this one over here, double bond and O minus. Okay, so these are the two possible enolates that are going to form. And the thing is, we actually do need to, uh, we need to learn about this, um, uh, because we can actually control which one will be formed. And the idea that comes out now is the idea of kinetic, versus thermodynamic enolates. And so if we just quickly look at these two uh, enolates that I've drawn out, this enolate over here, the double bond all right, that is formed, um, is more highly substituted. Okay, it's got more bonds to it okay, compared to this one, which has an H over there. So more carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-heteroatom bonds to this one. It's the more substituted double bond and it's the most stable one, and so we would call this one the uh, thermodynamic. Okay, and this one over here uh, is actually the one which, in a sense, if you think about the possibilities here for when deprotonation occurs, you've got two H's on this carbon and one over there. So statistically speaking, it's, it's much easier to, to take away. I mean, whether you take that, you've got two protons to choose from versus one over there. So this enolate over here tends to form faster um, because there's just more options for it to, uh, to deprotonate. So this one uh, is called the kinetic uh, enolate because it is formed faster. And, and all we need to learn is <clears throat> to be able to deal with things like this is uh, just to understand under what conditions each one can be formed. Uh, the thermodynamic uh, enolate um, has everything to do with using a very weak base. Um, and it's about a reaction that is 
in equilibrium. In other words, so what will happen is, as I've shown you, if you use a weak base, what will happen is uh, you'll form this, uh, maybe you form this even later over here, but this one can go back to the starting material. And eventually, over time, this will be the predominant uh, enolate that will be formed. Uh, the kinetic one is a little bit more challenging, but actually, in practice, is a bit easier to do. The kinetic enolate, um, what we need to do is we recognize that this is the sterically least hindered site. And so, if we can selectively deprotonate there, uh, and go only in one direction, not go backwards, then we can get this enolate uh, and get it quite uh, stably. Uh, and the solution to that, maybe you already have guessed, is that if we want to go completely over there, we don't want to have an equilibrium, we must use a very strong base. So kinetic enolates are using very strong bases. Uh, and it's not just very strong bases, but uh, also bulky. Uh, bulky bases uh, and of course you know exactly which one we're talking about the most common one is LDA uh, of course uh, HMDS is uh, another option uh, lithium so L, lithium hexamethylarsalazide uh, is another very good option for that the thermodynamic enolates tend to be um, the weaker bases like methoxide all right uh, methoxide might be an option uh, and some, some other ones. So um, <clears throat> that's pretty much what we need to be thinking of. So I'll, I'll leave you with something just to, to think about is, uh, say I made, uh, I've got this uh, ketone over here, this is butanone, and what I want to do is I want to make this compound here. What conditions would I need and reagents in order to achieve that. And so I'll leave that as a question for you to consider.